And I did want to note that uh, the photographer's name is down in the bottom of the of these photos. That's that's who took these. I want to give them credit. So I'm going to speak about flame leaf sumac today. And the proper scientific name is Rus copolinum. I state that because it's it's uh, the taxonomy of this is very confusing. At some point, it had been broken up into like six different species. But currently, there's only two varieties recognized in Copalinum variety lanceolata is the one that's found in Texas. So there are two varieties, but the one in Texas is lanceolata. It's, it has many, many common names. Uh, if you go to purchase this, you may, well, typically you'll see it listed as either flame leaf sumac or prairie sumac or winged sumac or shining sumac. It also has many other names. You can purchase it from native plant uh, nurseries or you can grow it yourself. I was able to take a cutting off of uh, FM 517 and it was very easy to grow from a plant I found there, but it is found throughout East Texas. So it, where does it grow? It likes uh, sandy loam soils or loamy soils. Because of that, it's not necessarily that common in the Houston area until you get up to the north side of town where you start to see pine trees growing. If you, if you find pine trees, you'll probably find this tree growing alongside of them. It does need full sunlight, so it, you'll find it on the edges of forests or uh, maybe on the edge of a creek, although not in a uh, floodplain because it is not flood tolerant. You also find it out in prairies. It is a prairie invader. So, uh, for example, Brazos Bend State Park, has, this plant is quite common there out in the prairies, out on the Mima Mounds and the little dunes that are found out in the prairie. Uh, in Texas, it does grow west to Austin, up to Fort Worth, and then uh, all throughout East Texas and down south to around Victoria. What does it look like? It's a great plant. It does look like a sumac, so it looks like a large bush or a small tree. It does live up to its name and that in the fall, the leaves are exactly what you see here in the photo, bright red, uh, gorgeous. It'll get to about 15 feet tall. It does form clumps that will sprout from rhizomes, um, so it'll spread vegetatively and, and form a, a nice dense clump. Generally, as long as it has a fairly well-drained soil, it's going to do well. It does need full sun. I think it should be planted in a raised bed. Otherwise, once it's established, it may start to take over other areas uh, out in your yard through root suckers. So everybody always asks, can you eat it? You know, I don't know. Uh, you can't eat this. You can't eat the berries. They do. People do use the berries. They make a drink out of it, a lemonade-like drink. Uh, you steep it, and then uh, just like you would make a tea, uh, iced tea. I've never tried it. Um, maybe somebody has, but I hear it can be quite good. Propagation, there are boy and girl sumacs. They both have flowers. However, the boys only have the male flowers. The females only have the female flowers. So uh, the one I have in our yard uh, turned out, it flowered the first time this year and it turned out to be a boy. There's no fruit on it. I was really disappointed. But if it is a female, it'll have the clusters of red berries and they'll hang on there for quite a while and it's really beautiful. If you want to grow it, you can grow it from cuttings or you can take the seeds and scarify them by putting them in like vinegar or a, some sort of a weak acid or you could very gently scarify them on a piece of fine sandpaper. I guess that's it. Thank you.